don't want to hear that. You don't want to hear that. They do. Alright, let's go. They hear. Alright, All right, let's, let's go. See, see if we get some more commentators. Alright, <laughs> All right, bye. Dude, I think It's fun, dude. The mic is on. You guys are listening to Braveheart, uh, Land Heroes, uh, premier commentator for whenever they have their events on. Hope you guys have been enjoying the match so far. We just saw earlier on was a very intense match between Blazer Cat and Pitbull. Uh, if you guys are you know only watching this match, I really, really highly recommend you guys go ahead and check that video out. That thing was insane. Oh my goodness, guys. Back and forth brawling between those two guys and Pitbull uh, came back. Anyways, that's not what we're talking about. We have to talk about this match because Pitbull coming out with a beautiful classic setup that Lucario has always been using since uh, very early on in the game. Uh, our sphere set up right into a, a up smash. Right now, uh, Pitbull is catching the hands and getting the classic up airs that Fox is able to throw out so easy. But uh, as we all know, Lucario is a character that that uh, thrives off of this rage that he has. So, so right now he's at 100, and this is something that I'm pretty sure that Pibble is very used to fighting in. You know, this rage is going to be a mechanic that he can very well prevail with because it's something that just lets his damage out. just like that. Look how much damage he put just with the side B. Alright, so so far right now you guys see Pitbull looking for that setup because that is very easily the most optimal setup that Pitbull wants to be using to take off this stock. A uh, very nice back air from uh, from the ledge using a jump to get away from the setup that Pitbull was looking for with his R sphere. Caught him unexpectedly taking that stock. Either way, as I was saying guys, what Lucario has that he can use to really prevail over Charlie is these two mechanics that he has. So he has uh, R sphere into his up smash, right? All of his Oh, uh, Excuse me, guys. Had to talk to someone real fast. As I was saying, so Pibble, uh, yeah, Pibble, Lucario has two very, very strong mechanics to him uh, for kills. He has the side B, as we all know, that thing kills very early, extremely well with Rage, and what I was just talking about previously, the R Spear setups. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, uh, because of that, I'm pretty sure those are the two things that uh, all Lucario players tend to rely on because they're so good, you know, to kill, right? Obviously. So, if you can just keep your mind well, well wrapped around those two ideas, you know, I'm pretty sure you can work well against avoiding it. So, Charlie avoided it really well from ledge, jumped over it back here. Either way, we're going on to game two right now. Pibble catching the hands already at 90%. But uh, he is fighting back now. He has stage control, uh, carrying center stage. The side B is going to allow CDK to actually uh, penetrate what Pitbull had right there. And now he is the one <gasps> catching him with the Firefox, taking the star just with that. Very, very beautiful play from CDK. We do not see that too often, but when we do, we need to appreciate it. Uh, that's funny. That side B could have actually uh, spiked Lucario. I'm pretty sure Lucario would have been okay, though, but... It's just funny to see that we see you know I've seen it all around the US uh, Fox players to do that so that's that's pretty cool anyways so right now uh, CDK with a pretty nice lead he's only in the 60s and not in the red so far 
catching Pibble with all these beautiful strings as you guys are watching right now and going for the fire rock once again and does not get punished because he did cross up on Pibble's shield. Very, very nice uh, play by Charlie. Uh, so far, yeah, this guy is totally controlling the match. Uh, not so much contro uh, controlling stage control, but he's controlling the match. This guy has two stocks. Uh, he has to be very wary of the character that he's facing. But um, I can't say much because the place out that he's in. Oh, nice read by people. Unfortunately, the side B couldn't catch Fox right there and then. But it would have killed. Very, very unfortunate upbeat from people. That's going to be taking a stock for him. And CDK will be taking a game from people. Now it's 2-0. Uh, so far, CDK having a pretty hefty lead, but Pitbull is definitely not out for the count. As you guys saw previous match, if you guys are watching the stream, or maybe you guys can watch the match sooner or later, um, the previous match was insane. We had Blaster Cat, uh, you know, the super young prodigy against uh, Pitbull, and Pitbull made a comeback. This man was was losing against uh, against. Um, that's for Cap, pretty bad, and he just came back. Either way, going to game three, people have decided to go for the character switch, and Lucina, uh, that's shocking. Uh, you know, whenever I seen him play uh, these two sword characters, right, Marth and Lucina, I always saw Marth. I didn't really know that he would opt to go for Lucina, but uh, that's really cool because I don't want to be biased, but I'm a Marth main, so this is really, really cool to watch. Anyways, so right now he's doing fairly well, and you know what? I. I, I don't have enough knowledge to say, uh, you know, what exactly are the matchups here, but I do know that, you know, False, False brings out his Marth when he plays Fox, because he believes that beautiful coverage uh, using the Nair, knowing that it is a multi-hit, so he can cover the linear recovery that Fox also has. Uh, very, very nice play by Pibble. So far, his character switch working out so well for him, and first jab, uh, first hit jab right into a dan uh, Dancing Blade. Something that I do not see too often, so I actually very, very much like that option. But what a beautiful play right back. The retaliation come from CDK right from the ledge. Opting to go for that down air right into an up, uh, up smash. Something that I'm pretty sure he has labbed out many times. And done and executed so well. But yeah, as I was saying, you know, there is a lot of players who, you know, when they bring out Marth, they do say that he doesn't have that much of a bad matchup against Fox, and you know, unfortunately, I don't have that much knowledge to actually say that. But I do know that Falls brings out his Marth against Fox. He's done it in tournaments in New York, and I know that he's done it, uh, another beautiful counter, ex um, expecting the up tilt. But as I was saying, you know, Marth gets brought out against Fox, so I'm pretty sure that's because nice F smash, seeing that he wasn't going for the ledge, going to be punishing accordingly, and so far, uh, he is almost in the three digits, but he's managing to stay alive. So right now he's going to play a very patient game, similar to how he plays with Lucario. He's going to be staying back, waiting for the right opportunity to strike. Uh, but he does get caught up from that down to right into an up air. Uh, something that he needs to avoid and, and, you know, aside from that, be very, very aware of because one more up air and that's going to be taking the game. Oh, he's Okay. Okay. Oh! He doesn't take the second one? CDK? No! Guys, Charlie Charlie is known for the techs. He's known for this. He even has his own his own odd shot of him teching and he did not tech the second one. What? Lucia pulling through. I don't want to be biased, but I'm a Marth lane, so let's go. I like this. I like this a lot. Um one thing. The sword and their arrows are so much better because it covers so much range. So, excuse me, guys. So because of that, you know, it creates so much for him. You know, oh, I am getting joined by uh, a good friend of mine, Gen Oneist, Devin. How are you doing, man? Hey, stream. I'm doing pretty good. We're pretty good. Okay. Yeah. So as I was saying, uh, what was I saying? Uh, uh freak. I forgot. Oh yeah, I'm talking about um. So yeah, the one thing that, you know, Lucina, aka Marth, both have over Lucario is that they have a very, very superior edge guarding game as opposed to Lucario. Their aerials are so, so well driven. They can cover so much range, and being the character that Fox is, only having a straight side recovery and a straight upwards recovery, uh, you know, aside from, like, angles, right? Lucario and Marth, I mean, excuse me, Lucina and Marth excel so much. So as you guys saw that in Game 3, uh, we saw a... a uh, a little factor in this character switch that definitely prevailed for Pitbull, and now he has taken game three because of it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was in a deep little uh, knowledge drop right yeah, there. Yeah, but also I saw that Pitbull won game three. 
Uh, yeah. yeah, game three as uh, Lucina. Thing. Lucina, yeah, that's what I was talking about right now. You know, he won because of you know that. Yeah. That edge guarding, you know, uh, Ooh, edge. And that. <gasps> oh, he wanted the, he wanted he, the air dodge. Yeah, CDK took game one because of that. Oh, wow. Because of the Firefox. So that was insane. I was like, what? You, know, you don't see that too much. Yeah. Also, um, it's really hype. Speaking of uh, matchups, Lucina also has a disjoint, mm -hmm. which also helps instead of, uh, instead of the Lucari matchup. Alright, it was so far, you know, um... Yeah, Charlie Ooh, Saves FF's gonna be taking out! Okay. Yep, and there we go, Loser's Finals goes to Charlie the King. And Normilla Pitbull is yeah. now out of the tournament. 